Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern House Bank. We recently had the opportunity to talk with Dr. Gordon Lithgow from the Buck Institute on his work on aging. In this video, we will walk through a paper where he and his team looked at AKG and its effect on health span and lifespan in mice. Here is the paper. Alpha-ketoglutarate, an endogenous metabolite, extends lifespan and compresses morbidity in aging mice. AKG has many roles in our cells, but one of the core ones is as a key metabolite in the TCA or tricarboxylic acid cycle. The TCA cycle, also called the Krebs cycle, occurs in our mitochondria and is the process by which we make energy from both fats and sugars and so is of key importance to our metabolism. As you can see here, AKG is part of this cycle. Here they investigated the effects of calcium AKG on health span and lifespan in mice. Note that there are other forms of AKG, particularly arginine AKG. In this case, they used calcium AKG because it happened to be the one that they had used earlier in studies with C. elegans. There was no comparison done between the two in this study. For the study, they looked at mice over a period of months, tracking their health and lifespan. What they found was that calcium AKG promotes a longer, healthier life and decreases inflammation. One of the mechanisms of this was the promotion of interleukin-10, an anti-inflammatory cytokine. By both reducing frailty and enhancing longevity, AKG compresses morbidity in mice. Let's have a look at the study and results in more detail. Here are some of the key statistics. It was a randomized trial with a group on AKG and another group as control. The subjects were a common strain of lab mouse called C57BL6. There were 182 of them, evenly split between male and female and divided into two separate cohorts. So each cohort had 24 controls and 24 mice on AKG of both sexes. They were fed regular mouse chow, with one group having added AKG. The AKG was added as 2% of the food by weight. I have tried to figure out what this would mean for human dose, but could not determine the conversion factor. The outcome they measured was frailty and lifespan. Here are the survival curves for female and male. They refer to pool data as this is from both of the cohorts. In females, the median lifespan was extended by 16.6% and survival by 19.7% from for one cohort and 8% and 10.5% respectively for the other. For males survival was not significant but the median lifespan was extended by 9.6 and 12.8%. The other thing is to note this line at 18 months. This is where the AKG experiment started. The conversion of mouse time to human time requires a factor of 40 so this is around the equivalent of a 60 year old human. Lifespan is quite easy to measure, but the authors were also interested in the health of the animals. For this, they used a frailty index for mice, which had been previously developed. The frailty index measures things like fur color and condition, bone condition, gait. These are the charts for the female mice. The frailty index works by having a higher number the more frail the animal is, so lower is better. We can see that the mice with AKG consistently had better results. And here are the same f charts for the males. Again, not as good as the females, but better than the controls. The improvements in phenotype were sex-specific, with females having improved fur and gait and less dermatitis, among other things. Meanwhile, males had reduced eye discharge and tumours. One thing to note is not all phenotypes improved. In particular, exercise to exhaustion and cardiac performance did not. However, as they say, nothing got worse. Here is an image of two mice, one from the control group and one from the AKG group. We can see the one on the left has much nicer fur, and it's less easy to see, but it also has a straighter tail. One other measurement they made was to compare percentage of lifespan where the animal was sick. To do this, they compared the time the animal was unwell to the total lifespan of the animal. Here they saw a decrease of 46% in females and 41% in males. To understand the mechanism better, they looked at another cohort of 18-month-old female mice. As we know, age-associated diseases are accompanied by chronic inflammation. They looked at the levels of inflammatory cytokines in 20-month-old female mice. 
and they saw that the increase seen in the controls was not seen in the AKG treated mice. They repeated the experiment on both sexes but only saw this effect in female mice. They saw that female T-cells, a kind of immune cell, produced more IL-10 with AKG treatment, where IL-10 is interleukin-10, a potent anti-inflammatory cytokine. So they conclude that females may see reduction in chronic inflammation with AKG. They also looked at the effect of, on senescent cells as a source of inflammation. They note here that senescent cells drive age-related illness. Paracrine means secretions which affect the local area and here refers to SASP. In the in vitro studies they showed that SASP was less inflammatory though it did not stop the formation of senescent cells. They note that reducing SASP does reduce inflammation but there may be other effects going on at the same time. Senescent cells also activate inflammatory pathways in immune cells. So it is possible that AKG is inhibiting both SASP and the immune cell activation. They do not explicitly say this, but it looks like this should be good for reducing CD38 expression. Again, no significant adverse effects. Only cataracts and corneal opacity are less than statistical significance. It should be noted that AKG has been used in clinical trials without associated adverse effects and has also been used by bodybuilders for a long time. And AKG plasma levels decline tenfold between the ages of 40 and 80. It seems that AKG is not something that is available in our diet and so they suggest that supplementation is the only way to restore levels. Their conclusion is that as it is generally regarded as safe their findings point to a potential safe human intervention to improve quality of life in the elderly population. I think this looks really interesting. It aligns well with the aims described by Professor Nir Barzilai and others to extend health span and get lifespan extension as a side effect. There are still many questions, not least of which is does it work in humans, but also what is the dosing and the bioavailability. When we talked to Professor Kennedy in Singapore, he mentioned that one of the clinical studies he was doing is with AKG. It will be interesting to see the results. We are considering taking AKG, especially I like the fact that the trial was done in middle-aged mice and it still seemed to be effective. I do hope that you found the video informative. We will shortly be releasing our video with Dr. Lithgow. Please stay tuned. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.